Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. I'm going to be showing you today how to create these nice little spiraling design. I think of it as a kind of a fern, but you can uh, you can interpret it any way that you like. So what we are going to be doing today is we're going to be working on a small piece of paper. Of course, you can use any size that you want. Mine is five inches by seven inches. I prefer this, especially when you when getting started with something so that it's not too overwhelming. And the kind of paper that I do have here, it is, is watercolor paper, nothing special. It's just a kind of a hot press paper, about 90 pounds. If you are interested specifically in the tools that I'm using today, you can always check the description of the video. And this is the pen that I'm going to be using. It's just a kind of this normal office type pen. Again, I will provide links so that you, if you can check these out. Later, when I do add some of the uh, shading here, I am going to be using a small watercolor brush and an ink wash, which I already have here prepared. If you've never used an ink wash, I'll explain it to you later. It's essentially just a mix of, of your favorite kind of ink and some water, and then you just mix it until you get the right consistency. But we can talk about that later when we get there as well. So how about we go ahead and get started creating this design here and for the duration of this video for this tutorial I am going to be working in real time so none of this is going to be sped up or moved along or edited in any way we're just going to go straight through and do it in real time. So as you can see here this is built on a design of a spiral so that's what we're going to start with here. We're going to create a spiral just like this one for our our part here we're going to draw it in the other direction so I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do that here. I am going to start with a pencil. So I think I'm going to connect it about here. Since I do already have my first one I'm just going to add a second one to add one here and I'm thinking about here and I do want it to be nice and round. I, I also don't want it to make too many too many rotations here. If I swirl it in, it's going to get even harder to draw designs. So I think I'm actually going to bring that back just a little bit. About that is enough. So just about a little more than a, a rotation here. So now that I have that, I can just work with my pen for the duration of for the rest of this. So let's go in just a little bit. So let's use my pen here. If you're wondering about the size of this pen, it's approximately a 0.5 millimeter. Approximately 0.5. And when you're drawing this, you don't need to worry about that outer edge. As you can see, there is no design along the outer edge of this line. Now that I'm looking at it, I am going to adjust the curvature of this a little bit, just because I, I prefer it if it's rounder and not too kind of squashed. So let's see here, when I get to the end here, I'm just going to start creating one of my first spirals. So there's going to be a little one like this. And at the end of it, there's just going to be a little bit of a teardrop, just like that. So this line that I drew right now, this is my, my outer line. And so I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to start an inner line here. This is going to serve as the, the spine or the stem for this design. So I'm just going to go around and create another line here. And then I'm just going to connect it right here to this small spiral, just like that. So now we have our foundation for this. So there we go. And so what I like to do is I like to start working at the base of this. It is also possible to start working from the other side, so from the end here. But I, I personally prefer starting from right here and then just working my way inward into the spiral. So for this one, because of the way it's overlapped, I'm actually going to be starting way over here just to show the growth kind of naturally climbing up this. So I'll start with a few little ones. So here I'm just doing a spiral, just like that. And again, I really like to add that, that little teardrop shape right there. So that way I add that, it just helps it look really nice. And then I bring a second line and just bring that down like that. So these initial spirals are going to be very, very easy. I'm going to make sure that I alternate 
between long ones and short ones, just because I think it helps them fit in there a little better. So let me move up. I'll show you a few more. They're nice and easy. So I'm going to make a shorter one here, just a little guy. And then here's another line. Bring it down like that. So what I am going to do with these, and I'll show you right now, is to help add some more depth. Right here at the base, I'm just going to add this little line, just like a little eyelash. Like that. And like that. So as you can see in the ones here to the left, they all have that. And so all of these will have that as well. And I'm going to continue showing you just a few more. Now, I will advise you to make sure that you do watch how I make all of these as I continue through the pattern because it does change. And it does actually get a little tricky as we move up. These are the easiest. So that's why it's the other reason why it's nice to start off right here. It'll give you a feel for how these these little swirls work up, how these spirals work up. So as you can see, I'm making smaller, larger, smaller, larger, kind of like that. It's really nice to alternate that way. So I'm going to make a long one here, just like that, and bring it back in. Make that little little dash there. I'll zoom back out briefly so that you can see what it looks like so far. So that's what's happening right now. And again, about this whole length here shouldn't be too hard. You can almost consider it practice. Just kind of get used to how it feels to draw these shapes. So I'm just going to keep going here and I'll slowly rotate as I work my way through there. And as you can see, it's fine to make that design go all the way over and even touch this this part of the the initial curve. So that's what I'm doing right there. And you don't necessarily have to alternate for between a a larger one and a smaller one. You don't have to. I just feel like it helps them fit in there just a little better. So you'll see right here, this one's a little shorter. I'm going to fit in one that's going to fill this whole area up here like that. Just like that. So that's the nice part of having a short one than a long one. So here's a shorter one. Two lines. I'm going to add those little dashes at the base of each one. Like that. So here's where we're, we're going to start approaching where it gets a little bit trickier just because of the curvature of that spiral. And right now it's still okay. It's a little manageable. It's still okay. I'm starting to approach that curve and so I'm getting ready for that right now. So here we go. I'm going to add an even bigger one here. And as you're working on this, if you don't keep in mind that this whole shape is curving, you might start to lose track of, of each one of these smaller spirals. So keep an eye on it. So what I'm doing in order to account for the way it curves, I'm adding these little black, almost triangles right here, these, these little black spots. What it's doing is it's separating each of these spirals at their base so that I'm not tempted to put them so close together. The base basically needs to start separating. So I'm doing that here as well. You'll see that. Just adding this little slit of black right there, helping to separate the base. Let's do another one here then. A little spiral. And bring it in like that. All of this will disappear, so don't worry about it if it looks a little different, if you don't like the way it looks, just keep going. It's good to practice anyway. So here again, I'm going to add, let me move up so it's a little easier to see. I'm going to add this little bit of black right here. Otherwise, it'll get a little awkward fitting them in here. So way over here, let's fit all of this in. There we go, like that, not too bad. Let's keep going. I am going to continue adding this little bit of black right here. Like that. And 
and finish it off. Okay, let's add that, that little dash down here, like that. Let me keep going. I am going to put one in here that's almost almost going to look like it's flush with this this bigger piece here. Almost. It's okay to put some in there that are at a totally different angle. So there it is. So this is where it would get difficult. So you want to pay attention right here. It can get a little tough. You might be tempted to just put one here that's laying down and then you're going to start losing the pattern. So what I'm going to do is again add a little bit of black here, just right there, just to separate them. Just right there. And then I will continue and make a spiral that goes way over here. You'll notice that the spirals on these are also very small, very tiny. Way over here we were able to make them just a little wider, a little bit larger, but as they start working their way in here they're going to get very, very tiny. So let's do another one. Let's add that little bit of black here. This will separate them a little. And I'm going to make one that goes way out here. And finish it off like that. Okay, there we go. Just gonna keep going. Add that little bit of black. This is a very fun pattern. I think I, I tried it a couple of times just to make sure that I really was getting the hang of it. It's fun. It's just not fun if you don't keep this, if you don't keep this going right here as you're curving around. You can get kind of lost in all the little, all the little spirals. So it's really good. So here we go. Adding, just continuously adding that little bit of black right there just to separate them like that. And then I'm putting my next spiral like that. And notice they're able to line up much, much better that way. If you don't add these little gaps here, it's going to get a little difficult to put all of these in here. But go ahead and practice. Go ahead and see what works for you. You might always be able to do it a different way and then that works for you and that's fine. It's absolutely fine. I'm just going to keep working my way around right here. Make one of these big spirals that goes way out here like that. Making good progress actually. So just gonna keep working at it here. Maybe maybe I'll put a small one here. I'll put a smaller one. So right here I'm almost gonna lay it down just a little bit. Put that line in there. So right here, it's getting a little bit cramped. So again, I'm gonna just put that black, just like that. So like that. And then I will make one that goes way over here. And just close it up, like that. So see, you're, it's always possible to just, just fit them in there. You just wanna keep in mind how they're curving, just how they're curving around. So there's my little bit of black right there. And then when that goes over here, I'm gonna fill in this space here, just like that. I'm gonna close it off. We're actually almost done. These last few fill in the spaces really quickly. I am going to make a pretty large little spot here. See, all that, all that amount that I filled with black. And then that way I can fill in the next spiral to right there. And it works out just fine. I'm going to make a very long one here, way out here like that. Notice I didn't put any black here at the beginning, so I'm going to go back and add some in. So that's always a, a possibility. And then I think we should just be able to fill just a few more here. Just a couple more and it's pretty much done. Couple little ones. Notice it's getting it's getting pretty cramped. And so I will not be shy in adding these these black spots right here. Right there. I won't be shy. Just gonna go all the way over here. Almost there. 
So I just have this little bit of space. So what I think I'm going to do is just add one relatively long one. Depending on how much space you have left, you can figure out a couple different ways to put those in there. But it looks like mine's just kind of this long, slender space. So I'm just going to put one long one that just fills in right there. That's what I'm going to do. There we go. Just like that. There we go. So that is the entire thing already. It's all done. And so as you can see what I did in my first one, I had filled in all these spaces with black. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory when you get to working on yours. Right there, you can see there's lots of little spaces in between. And just like I'm gonna show you right here, you can just go in and just take your time and fill them in with black. It really helps everything stand out. I'm not going to do that all on camera right now, but I think you you understand what I mean for that. I will show you, however, just a little bit of how I do the shading in case you've never done this before. If you have done it, you probably know it's a lot of fun. It's really good stuff. So again, what I have here, this is just a really simple watercolor brush, kind of a small one, a little bit of a small one. And then what I have here is some of my favorite ink. And again, I will link it in the description so you can check it out if you're interested in this kind of ink. It is a gray acrylic ink. I can show you, I think this is the bottle. Yeah, here's the bottle. This is the one that I use. This is Liquitex. It's a muted gray. It's really lovely. So I mix it with some water. I've got this little container here. Just mix it with some water so it's just really, really light. And then essentially, I'm just going to come in with my brush I'm just this is probably the reason why I, I've been using a lot of watercolor paper recently because it takes really well to application of water so I'm just really gently going to add it downward so that if there's a little bit of pooling it's down here at the base that way it'll be just a little darker I'm just trying to create a slight gradient so I just work my way downward really quickly Of course, you can always color this in any other way that you want. Have fun with it. Use whatever your favorite medium is. If you do have watercolors, go ahead and use those. Pretty similar to what I'm doing here. You can accomplish some of the same things there. So you can see there, just adding a slight shadow. I think I was off camera for a second there, so sorry about that. Let me get, there we go, right there. It's just a slight shadow, and that's all it takes. It's just a little bit of something like that if you want you can always come in and do another layer if you want those shadows even deeper you can always add just a little more and the thing that i really love about the pen that i use is even though it isn't isn't technically waterproof it behaves very waterproof so it's very lovely it was a fairly inexpensive pen and it just worked out really nicely so there's there's the little bit of shading just a tiny bit nothing too fancy just around the edges I'm also going to add just a little bit to the stem right here where it connects with the other one just a tiny bit my preference to have a bit of a shadow there. All right, there we go. And we can let that dry and maybe come back to it later and see what else I can add. I'm probably going to keep adding a lot of designs around here, but for now, that is how we do it. So I just wanted to give you a chance to give this dry, see if this is a design that you like. It'll be lots of fun. I'm going to try it in a couple of different drawings and see what else I can make with it. So I hope that you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good day.